Okay, in this video we're going to talk about continuous functions when a function is continuous and when a function is discontinuous. We're going to start off by looking at all the ways a function is not continuous and then end it with uh, the easier example when it is continuous. So first let's give the uh, three-part definition of continuity of both formally and informally. So first, for a function to be continuous, the limit as x approaches a of f of x must exist. And what that means in informal language is that the right limit must equal the left limit. So what's the second part of the definition of continuity? The function must be defined at the x value a where we want it to be continuous. For an informal language, what that means is there is not a hole in the graph at x equals a. And finally, the third requirement for a function to be continuous is the value we get from part a, the left and right limit common value, must equal the value that we get where the function is defined. And that is expressed as uh, part 3 here. Informally, we express it this way. So when this third part of the definition fails, what happens is we get a hiccup in the graph. So for it to be true, we say there cannot be a hiccup in the graph. So let's look on the following slides at examples of uh, all of these three types of discontinuity. So the first uh, example we want to look at is where the function is discontinuous because the left limit does not equal the right limit. Here's our function. When x is less than 2, the y value is x plus 2. When x is greater than or equal to 2, the function is f of x equals x. A function of this type is said to have a split domain. And what does the graph of this function look like? So we see that as x approaches uh, 2 from the left, the function winds up at the y value 4. And as the function approaches 2 from the right, it winds up at the y value 2. So we've written that down. The left limit for the function is 4. The right limit for the function is 2. And clearly those values are not equal. So the left limit does not equal the right limit. We call this type of discontinuity a jump discontinuity. So in the next slide, let's look at uh, another type of discontinuity. So here in our example 2, we have the function uh, that is 3, the y value 3 to the left and the right of x equals 0, but it is not defined at x equals 0. Its graph looks like this. And clearly, it has a hole at the uh, at the uh, point zero three. The function is not defined. So there's the hole at the uh, point zero three, and the function is not defined at x equals zero. A second example of a function that is not defined at a given x value is uh, the function f of x equals 1 over x, which, as you know, has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So let's look at its graph. So clearly this function has a hole at uh, x equals 0, and let's write down everything that's wrong with this function. This vertical asymptote function actually is discontinuous in every possible way. It's not defined at x equals 0. The left limit doesn't equal the right limit at x equals 0, and because these two uh, parts of the definition fail, the third part can't possibly be true. So vertical asymptote, uh, or at the vertical asymptote, a function is discontinuous for all uh, reasons, all parts of the definition of continuity failing. On our next slide, we're going to look at uh, another example of how a function may be discontinuous. So here's a function that at, uh, for x uh, not equals 0, we define it as the parabola y equals x squared. For x equals 0, it is the y value y equals 5. So let's look at its graph. 
So we see at the point zero, 0, the parabola has a hole in it, but the left and right limits are equal there. And at the uh, x value 0, uh, the point that we get is the point zero, 0,5. So let's write this out formally. Right, so we call it a hiccup discontinuity, but written more formally, we note that the left and right limits at x equals 0 are 0. However, when we plug 0 into the function, we get out the y value 5, and clearly those values are not equal. So for a hiccup discontinuity, we should also note that part 1 of the definition of continuity is true. Part 2 of the definition of continuity is also true, whereas part 3 is not true. Okay, so that's our hiccup discontinuity. On the next slide, we're going to look at uh, the sum up of this. Excuse me, on this slide, we're going to look at one more example of a uh, jump discontinuity with a function that is a little bit, um, uh, has a little bit more complex definition. So we're starting with this function. It, <coughs> it has an absolute value in its uh, numerator. And we want to look at that absolute value in the numerator and pull it off to the side and make sure we're clear what that means. So you're familiar with an absolute value function, meaning that whatever number you put into it, the result is going to be uh, positive. When we have uh, expressions under an absolute value sign, we have to handle them a little bit more, more formally. So when the x value uh, is greater than 1, the expression under the absolute value sign here, absolute value of x minus 1, is already positive, and so what we do in that case is, is to remove the absolute value sign as we've done here. In the case when the uh, x value is less than 1, what's under the absolute value sign is a negative number. And so what we must do to make that number uh, a positive number is we must reverse the sign of the expression under the absolute value. And that's what we have done here. <clears throat> so on the next slide, we're going to rewrite our function f of x, taking into account that we're writing f of x this way when x is greater than 1, and f of x this way when x is less than 1. Okay, so for x greater than 1, we replace the absolute value of x minus 1 in the numerator with this, removing the, abs the absolute value sign, and for x greater than 1, we replace <coughs> the absolute value of x minus 1 in the numerator with this, reversing the sign of the expression under the absolute value. So when we uh, simplify that, we get for x greater than 1 and x equals 1, the y value is 1, whereas for x less than 1, the y value is minus 1. Let's see what the graph looks like. So it's clear, right, that this function has a jump discontinuity because the left and right limits aren't equal at x equals 1. So, summing up, what are the types of uh, discontinuities we've looked at? There was the jump discontinuity, where the left limit did not equal the right limit, and the graph looked like this. There was the whole discontinuity that either was not defined or had a vertical asymptote and an x value a. And it looked like one of these two graphs, and we also noted in the case of the vertical asymptote, the function uh, failed the definition in all three cases. It didn't have a left-right limit, wasn't defined, and the limit wasn't equal to the defined value. And so on the next slide, let's uh, look at the other type we, uh, of discontinuity we looked at, the hiccup discontinuity. The hiccup discontinuity was where the left and right limits are equal, but the uh, y value was not where it was supposed to be. Formally, that was the left-right limit didn't equal the y value where it was supposed to be. And graphically, it would look something like this with this y value here. 
<coughs> not where it was supposed to be. These types of disc, this type of discontinuity is also given another name called a removable discontinuity. It's actually a removed discontinuity. We've removed this point from here and put it here, which is not where it's supposed to be or not where it should be to make it continuous. Finally, we note that most functions you will encounter are continuous and that a way to characterize a function uh, that is continuous is just to look at its graph. When you graph a continuous function, it's a function that can be drawn in one piece without lifting your pen from the paper. So most functions of these type or this type, however, in the uh, application problems you will encounter later on, you need to know when a function is discontinuous and avoid those uh, spots when you're applying uh, uh, function or you're applying the techniques you have um, in later courses.